All right, we're still in ecology, and today we'll be looking at food chains versus food webs. There is a difference. Now, energy in an ecosystem flows in a one-way stream. It goes from the primary producers, like our autotrophs, to the various consumers, the primary consumer, the secondary consumer, the tertiary consumer, and so on. Now, a food chain is a series of steps in which organisms transfer energy by eating and being eaten. Now, food chains can vary in length depending upon the number of producers and consumers that are in the ecosystem. Now, in aquatic food chains, the primary producers are attached algae and free-floating algae. Now, the free-floating algae is what we call phytoplankton. It's phytoplankton because they use photosynthesis, and the phyto meaning light. They use the sun's light to make their energy by using the process photosynthesis. That's why they're called phytoplankton. And sometimes scientists will say, oh, a consumer is one step away from the producer or two steps away. Let's take a look at what they mean when they say it's one step away from the producer or two steps away. So here we have a very basic food chain, very easy to follow. Let's take a look at the middle one here. Uh, the same principle applies for all of these. Here we have a rabbit, which is a consumer. Here we have carrots, which are a producer. We can say the rabbit is one step away from the producer. Let's take a look at the fox. What does the fox say? The fox says he's one step away from the primary consumer or two steps away from the producer. And then we have the lion, which is one step away from the secondary consumer, two steps away from the primary consumer, or three steps away from the producer. All right, here's another food chain. We have terrestrial food chain, terrestrial meaning terrain, land, aquatic food chain doing with the water. Same thing, we take a look at the lion. The lion is two steps away from the producer, one step away from the zebra, who is the primary consumer. You might be saying, why does that make a difference? Who cares? Well, it lets scientists know and other people know how much energy is being transferred by knowing how many steps away we are. And we'll take, we'll take a look at that a little later uh, today. So food webs. Most ecosystems have more complicated relationships when it comes to producers and consumers. They can't be described using a food chain. For example, a hawk may not only eat snakes, but may eat mice too. If we use that on a food chain, it's only going to show that one relationship. Maybe the hawk eating the snake or the hawk eating the mice. It may not show both. Now, ecologists call the network of feeding interactions between different species a food web, and it's a graphical representation of everything that's going on. Food webs contain food chains, and it's easy to follow the food chain inside the food web. The food chain is the path from the producer to the final consumer. Now, there are several food chains within one food web. All right, we're going to take a look at one from the Florida Everglades. And it looks like there's a lot of action going on here, and there is. It may look a little overwhelming at first, but all you have to do is follow the arrows. It's very easy to read. Let's start here with the sun. So let's take a look at the uh, bladderwort. So the sun uh, gives the bladderwort its energy, uses photosynthesis. The bladderwort is then eaten by the uh, Easter mud turtle, which is then eaten by the American alligator. Going in the reverse, and that's one uh, food chain. The sun... You, uh, gives the energy to the butterfly orchid, same thing, photosynthesis, which is then eaten by the mosquito. The mosquito is then eaten by the southern leopard frog. I continue following the arrows. The southern leopard frog is eaten by the raccoon. The raccoon is then eaten by the American alligator. All you have to do is follow the arrows, and we can see the American alligator eats one, two, three, four different items. If we were just looking at a food chain, it may seem like the alligator only eats one item as opposed to four. All right, let's talk about decomposers and detritivores in food webs. Now, decomposers and detritivores are just as important as consumers are. Now, remember, decomposers use powerful enzymes to break uh, matter down. Detritivores actually feed on the animal and plant remains. Now, many primary producers die without ever being eaten. Now, decomposers convert that dead material to detritus that is then consumed by detritivores. The, de the decomposition process releases nutrients that can be used by other primary producers. That energy, that matter, it's not created or destroyed, it's just released back into the ecosystem. Now, decomposers recycle nutrients, and without them, those nutrients would remain locked in dead organisms.
Now, because food webs are very complex, it's often hard to predict how they will respond to an environmental change. Right now, there's global warming going on in the world, and if we don't do something to stop that, it's going to have a detrimental effect on the food webs in the ocean. Now, how can a decrease in one organism create problems in the entire food web? So let's go back to the Florida Everglades food web. Let's take a look at this. Let's imagine here that the bladderwort just disappears. That organism just decreases and it goes away. Well, if that happens, what is this Easter mud turtle going to eat? If there's nothing for the Easter mud turtle to eat, it's going to die. Well, if the Easter mud turtle dies, what about our American alligator? Well, it still has three other things to eat. But we can already see in one food pyramid right here, it's, we're starting to see an effect. Let's go to the butterfly orchid. Let's say the butterfly orchid disappears. Well, now the mosquito has nothing to feed off of. The mosquito, like the butterfly orchid, is going to die out. Now the southern leopard frog has nothing to eat because the mosquitoes have nothing to eat. It dies out. Now the raccoon doesn't have any southern leopard frogs to eat because the southern leopard frog couldn't eat the mosquito because the mosquito didn't have the butterfly orchid. Well, now that affects the American alligator because there's no raccoons left. So even when we look at one organism, it can really mess up an entire food web. So let's take, imagine the food web of the Southern Ocean. Now, all marine organisms in the Southern Ocean depend on zooplankton. Now, those are small swimming animals that feed on marine algae. So krill is an example of zooplankton. In recent years, the krill population has dropped substantially. Now, in addition, ice near Antarctica has started to melt, causing algae below ice to stop growing, which means less food supply for the krill. So the krill may not be as populated, may start to die out. Well, everything that depends on the krill is going to die too. Now, this is affecting all the organisms that depend on krill, either indirectly or directly to survive. Now, there's three types of ecological pyramids as we move towards the end of this. Now, every step in a food chain or food web is called the trophic level. Primary producers always make up the first trophic level. Consumers make up every other level. Now, one way to illustrate analyze levels is an ecological pyramid. It shows the relative amount of energy or matter contained within each trophic level in a food chain or food web. And there are three types of pyramids. The first one are pyramids of energy, and that's where the one step away from the producer, two steps away from the producer comes into play. You have the pyramids of biomass and pyramids of numbers. So let's talk about pyramids of energy. Now, only a small portion of energy passes from one trophic level to another. This is because only a small amount of energy gets stored in the organism eating. The rest of the energy is used to breathe, move, grow, reproduce. And most of the remaining energy, because of those actions, is given off as heat. Roughly, they call it the 10% rule. There's about 10% of energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next. So let's take a look at this one. Now, this is a pyramid of energy, and we have producers right there at the bottom. Notice when we go to the primary consumer, what's happening to our energy level? There's only 10% being transferred. We started with 1,000. Now we have 100. When we go to the secondary consumers, What's 10% of 100? That'd be 10. By the time we get to the tertiary consumers, we see the amount of energy has gone from 1,000 kilocalories to 1 kilocalorie. That's a huge, huge difference. So, as a general rule, about 10% of the energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next. Now, remember, this is a trophic level, the producers. The primary consumer, that's a trophic level. Secondary consumers, that's a trophic level. And then the tertiary consumer or the third consumer, that's another trophic level. And it's going to, only 10% is going to be transferred. 1,000, 100, 10, 1. Now, pyramids of biomass and numbers. The total amount of living tissue in a trophic level is called the biomass. Now, the amount of bi biomass can be determined by the amount of energy available. A pyramid of numbers shows the number of organisms at each trophic level. Now, pyramids of biomass and numbers, they can work together. Now, they can be very similar and very different. So let's imagine an ecologist squared off one mile and weighed all the organisms at each trophic level. That would be getting the biomass, figuring out the amount of living tissue. That's used for the pyramid of numbers. They can guess, guesstimate how many organisms may be in there. 
However, they can also be very different. Let's imagine a tree and a deer. Now imagine thousands of mosquitoes feeding off the tree and deer. There's a lot of biomass here, but a relatively low number of types of organisms. We have mosquitoes, we have deer, and a tree. We only have three organisms. That's a very low number, but a lot of biomass because there's thousands of mosquitoes feeding off the tree and the deer. So that's it. That's pretty. That's the difference between food webs and food chains. We also looked at how energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment or shoot me an email. We'll see you guys later.